Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Kinetics in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to do a continuation of the last video where we're going to analyze a Lineweaver Burke plot for the enzyme catalase, and we're going to determine the four kinetic parameters. Now, in the previous video, uh, we, we ultimately calculated the Vmax, which ended up being 200 million micromolar per second, and the Km, which was 25 millimolar or 25,000 micromolar. So these are two of the kinetic parameters that we need to calculate. There's two more, which are K-cat and catalytic efficiency. All right, And we're going to do that in this video. And then we have some follow-up conceptual questions, kind of test caliber questions for you. Okay, If you go back to the last video, I explained the best method for doing this. I always calculate Vmax first. Vmax is the reciprocal of the y-intercept, as shown right here. So whatever the B is, this thing in green, take the reciprocal of that. To find the Km, whatever the slope is, see this number, 0 0.000125, take that and just multiply by the Vmax, and that's your Km. So now I want to calculate the Kcat, and that's going to be step three. All right, so in general, you have a formula that says the Vmax is equal to the total concentration of the enzyme that was used times the Kcat, okay? So if I want to rearrange this to find Kcat, I need to divide both sides by the enzyme concentration, which means that my, if I take the Vmax and divide by the concentration, in this case it's catalase, although I'm just going to call it E for enzyme, that's catalase. If I do that, that's going to give me the Kcat. Now, the stipulation on this, and this is very important to understand, if I look at my units of Vmax, I have micromolar per second. The numerator is a concentration type of unit. The denominator is a time unit. I don't care so much about the time unit. It could be seconds, minute, hours, I don't care. But whatever the concentration unit is, in this case it's micromolar, the enzyme concentration used also has to be micromolar. Okay? Now your Vmax could be in nanomolar, but then your enzyme concentration would also have to be nanomolar. So whatever the concentration units are of your Vmax, it has to be that for the concentration of the enzyme. So depending on what your professor gives you or what you have in your lab, you may have to make a conversion, but they have to be the same. The time unit can be whatever you want, although normally people do it in per second. Okay. So fortunately, we already have here um, the Vmax and the uh, enzyme concentration in the appropriate units. So the Vmax is 200 million micromolar per second, and we're going to divide that by the total enzyme concentration, which in this case is 5 micromolar. All right, now notice in this case, again, the micromolar units cancel, and that's why we want them to be the same units, because whenever we get Kcat, we're going to have it in units of per second, so these concentration units have to be the same. Now, if you take 200 million divided by 5, you're actually going to get a value for Kcat of 40 million, and that's per second, okay? Sometimes you'll see this S as S to the minus one. Um, another way we could put this, again, 40 million, and then inverse seconds. We could do that. Either one of those are the same, and let me go ahead and circle that. That's our answer. So our Kcat is 40 million per second. Now, one thing that's really important is Kcat has another name. It's called the turnover number. Okay, so literally what it means is if I have one enzyme of catalase, one, I don't mean a mole of it. I don't mean a micromole, a nanomole, a femtomole. I, I'm not talking about a dozen enzymes. I mean one molecule of the enzyme. Literally if you looked at a ribbon diagram, that's one enzyme. Just one molecule of the enzyme. That enzyme is able to convert 40 million substrates into the product per second. Okay, So a lot of times people are confused on what Kcat or the turnover number is. It's literally if you had one enzyme, not a thousand of them, not a million, not a mole, one enzyme, one molecule of enzyme, it's able to turn 40 million substrates into product per second. Now the Kcat for catalase is enormous. Catalase is, I mentioned this in the previous video, catalase is the fastest enzyme known to man. So one important thing on these problems, okay, 40 million per second, that on a test you might see that and say, that's unreasonable, I did something wrong. Not necessarily. 
If you know you did the math right, trust yourself. These K cats can range a lot. Uh, 40 million per second is the, is the highest one you'll find. Okay, but this is, it turns out, is correct. This is based on real data. This is the actual K cat of catalase. All right, now let's do the last one, which is the catalytic efficiency. Okay, the catalytic efficiency, the way you determine this, is you take the K cat and you divide it by the Km of the enzyme. All right, so the K cat takes into account the rate of the enzyme. How fast does it turn the substrate into product? And the Km takes into account the binding, the tightness of binding between that substrate and the enzyme itself. So this is going to give us a measure that we can use to compare to other enzymes. Now, here, the units aren't really so much a problem, okay? The K cat, you could, you could keep it, um, you could have it really in any uh, time units you want, but everyone uses per second, so you're going to use that per second. The Km, we have it up here in both micromolar and millimolar. Doesn't matter what units are, it really doesn't. You could have it in femtomolar if you wanted to. Um, it's still going to be right, it's just some units are used more. Okay, so what's the K cat? The K cat is 40 million per second. What is the Km? Let's go ahead and use the micromolar one. Okay, but we could have used the millimolar, so it's going to be 25,000 micromolar. So let's let me go ahead and calculate what this ends up being. So let's see, 40. So 40 million divided by 25,000. All right, so it turns out that the catalytic efficiency of catalase is 1,600, and this is very important. The units are inverse micromolar, inverse second, inverse second, okay? These are the units, all right? Now, one thing I'm just going to tell you in this problem, I ask you a conceptual question. I'll go ahead and... and let me just read this. Okay, so for the kinetic analysis above, assays were carried out with catalase concentration of five micromolar. Determine the turnover number or KCAT catalytic efficiency. We just did that. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now I have some conceptual questions. Carbonic anhydrase, a different enzyme. Another enzyme in the blood has a catalytic efficiency of 44,444 per second per millimolar. Okay. Assuming that carbonic anhydrase has a Km of 9 millimolar, determine if catalase or carbonic anhydrase is more efficient, then discuss which or both of the factors that affect catalytic efficiency make this enzyme more efficient. All right, so we're asked to compare uh, the catalytic efficiency of catalase, which was this, to that of uh, carbonic anhydrase. Okay, now, this is why I first did this in micromolar per second, because I wanted us to have to do a conversion. This is a very, very tricky conversion. So watch this carefully. Okay, I'm gonna have 1600. Okay, and this, I just messed that up. 1600, now watch this. It's a bad idea, a very bad idea, to put inverse micromolar in the numerator. Okay, you always put it over micromolar and then over second. There's a reason you do this, all right? It turns out that what you're gonna to do to convert this to millimolar is you're going to have, okay, so one millimolar is 1,000 micromolar. A lot of people, if they put inverse micromolar in the numerator, say you wanted to convert this, I'll, I'll erase this in a minute, they would be tempted to have 1,000 micro, inverse micromolar, 1,000 inverse micromolar in the denominator, and then an inverse millimolar in the numerator, but that's actually not right. That actually doesn't work out like that. So um, it's, let me go ahead and just erase that. It's best on this to actually, for what you're doing, to put over micromolar and over second. And so what that does is it actually gives you the right conversion. So there's a thousand micromolar in a millimolar. So actually what you're going to do is you're going to multiply this times a thousand instead of dividing. It's different when you have these inverse units. Okay, so we're going to have 1,600 times 1,000, it looks like that's going to be 1,600,000. That's going to be inverse millimolar, inverse seconds, all right? And that's, remember, for catalase. What's our efficiency of carbonic anhydrase, which is also a very fast enzyme? 
That one is 44,444 inverse millimolar inverse second, so that's for carbonic anhydrase, all right? So which one of these enzymes, catalase or carbonic anhydrase, is more efficient? Well, when you're looking at comparing catalytic efficiencies, number one, they have to be in exactly the same units, same time units, same concentration units, and whichever one's higher is more efficient. So I would say for efficiency, obviously, you look at it, catalase is a lot more efficient, all right? Now I want to also compare the KMs. Now notice I'm given that carbonic anhydrase has a KM, put it down here, carbonic anhydrase has a KM of 9 millimolar. What did we find it was for catalase up here? For catalase, that had a KM of 25 millimolar, all right? Now this is a little confusing. You look at these numbers and you say, which one has more efficient binding to their substrate, okay? For catalytic efficiency and K-cat, whichever one's higher is, is the one that you look at. KM is the opposite. What KM is a measure of is the tightness of binding, okay? But KM technically is more similar to a dissociation constant, so it's backwards. So the lower the KM, the tighter the binding. The higher the KM, the looser the binding. So the question is, between this one, which is carbonic anhydrase, and this one, which is catalase, which one has more efficient binding? Which one binds tighter? And the one that binds tighter in this case is actually, is actually carbonic anhydrase. It turns out catalase doesn't bind as tightly because it has a higher KM. So that's one thing to keep in mind. All right, now we want to talk about the factors that make catalase more efficient. Now to compare this exactly, what I want to do is determine the K-cat for carbonic anhydrase. So to do that, I'm going to take the efficiency of the efficiency of carbonic anhydrase and multiply by its Km. All right, what's the efficiency? We just said it was 44,444 inverse millimolar inverse second. I'm going to multiply by the Km. We just found the Km for carbonic anhydrase was 9 millimolar. So notice that cancels inverse millimolar with millimolar. And the K-cat, let's go ahead and do that. So it's going to be 44, 444 4, 4, times 9. And it turns out the K-cat, I'm just going to round this. The K-cat is about 400,000 per second. All right. So obviously, you just look at this. 400,000 per second for carbonic anhydrase. It's 40 million per second for catalase. So the main factor that makes catalase more efficient is that it just has a much higher turnover. After all, it is the fastest enzyme. However, what we notice is that catalase has weaker binding to hydrogen peroxide, weaker binding to its substrate, whereas carbonic anhydrase has stronger or tighter binding. So what is the main reason why catalase is much, so much more efficient than carbonic anhydrase? The main reason is because the turnover number for catalase is so much greater than that for carbonic anhydrase. And even though the Km is smaller for carbonic anhydrase, the difference in K-cat is so much greater that catalase is going to be more efficient. So hopefully you learned a few things, all right? If you want to compare tightness of binding, you look at Km. Lower Km means tighter binding. Higher Km means looser binding or weaker binding. K-cat, the turnover number, is a measure of how fast the enzyme really is. How many substrates does it turn into product per unit time? The catalytic efficiency, you compare enzymes with using the same units, and it's the K-cat divided by the Km. Whichever one has the higher catalytic efficiency is the more efficient enzyme. Whichever enzyme has the higher K-cat or turnover number is the faster enzyme. Okay, so hopefully this made sense. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Um, and what we're going to do in the next few videos is we're going to move into inhibition. And inhibition is a little more challenging, but the same things that you applied here we're going to use in inhibition. Thank you for watching.